I am in San Antonio, Texas today. If you couldn't figure that out by the fact that the Alamo is behind me, the most recognized building in all of Texas, rightfully so. Uh, if it wasn't for the battle that took place here and for the sacrifices that were made, Sam Houston may not have actually won the Battle of San Jacinto, securing independence for the Texas Republic. Earlier this year, uh, I had a chance to revisit the San Jacinto Battlefield and Monument. It was my second visit. Uh, this time I actually got to go up to the top on the observation deck. And so since I've been there twice now, and I've been to the Alamo a few times already, I decided today, since I had some time in Texas, I was going to visit and revisit other sites associated with the Texas Revolution and the Texas Republic. I'm at Washington on the Brazos State Historic Site. Behind me, Texas Independence Hall, a reproduction of it anyway. Back in 1836, Texas was part of Mexico. Mexico's President Santa Ana said, hey, you know what? I don't like this old constitution we have. I'm just going to ignore it. The Texians, English-speaking settlers from the United States that were living in Texas at the time, said, whoa, Nelly. Uh, no, we don't like that. We're going to uh, declare independence. And they did that right here at Washington on the Brazos. Washington on the Brazos was a small town on the Brazos River and it was named for Washington DC, Washington on the Potomac, Washington on the Brazos, you get the idea. Just down the trail here past the visitor center is the Star of the Republic Museum, a museum dedicated to the Republic of Texas. I don't have a whole lot of time today to go see it. Uh, I've been here before, well worth the, well worth the effort, uh, but I've got other things to go see that I've never been to before five or six months prior to the signing of the Texas Declaration of Independence and the Alamo was the Battle of Gonzales, the very first battle of the Texas Revolution. This marker marks the spot of the very first shot. Uh, down the road here, there's another cool marker. So the reason that the whole battle took place was that the town of Gonzales had a small cannon to help protect them from Indian raids. They had been raided a couple times before. The Mexican government under Santa Ana said, no, you can't have a cannon. We don't like that because you might use it on us. Well, that's exactly what happened. The Mexican army tried to take it from the town of Gonzales. Town of Gonzales said, yeah, give it a try. Come and take it. This is their flag. Uh, the Mexican army was repulsed and that started the whole chain of events of the Texas Revolution. If you want to see the actual cannon that they were fighting over, that's at the museum downtown. Uh, I managed to get there just like 10 minutes before they closed, so I raced up the stairs and uh, managed to see it. It's the actual cannon. The barrel is original, all the rest of it is uh, reproduction. Still worth a visit. My last stop of the day was in Goliad, Texas. They have a, a monument there marking the mass grave site of Texas soldiers who, after they had surrendered to the Mexican army, were marched out into a field and executed. There was actually a greater loss of life in Goliad than there was here at the Alamo. So when you remember the Alamo, don't forget Goliad and the other sites significant to the Texas Revolution. Anyway, uh, that's it for me today. I've had a long day, a big Texas-sized adventure, so I'm going to call it a night.